In this part, I'm going to show you what you need to be able to follow along with this tutorial. Um, as I said before, this tutorial is about scrolling combat text, so I'm simply just going to add some simple sprites here so that you can see what you need to be able to follow along. Because you simply just need a sprite you can move around um, and collide with other objects so that you can um, test the scrolling combat text. First of all, we would need a player to our game. So basically you can right click in your asset folder here. I'm just going to clean up here because this is not what we need. Um, and inside that asset folder, you can create a new folder called scripts. So basically just right click, click create, select a folder and call it scripts. In that script folder, we will need a new script. So right click, click create, C sharp script and call it um, player. So this is going to be your player script and it's going to be attached to your player. Um, we would also need our player in our scene, so we can basically also drag in a player sprite. And this can be any sprite that you want. Um, basically, it, there's nothing special about sprite, it doesn't need to be animated or anything. If you just want to follow along with the tutorial and test this, you can simply just take any sprite. I'm just going to take a player sprite here, this little sprite here. And I'm going to use that as my player, so I'm just going to take the sprite and drag it into my scene here. And you see it's a little small, I can enlarge it a little, so it has two scale. Um, and this is going to be my player. I would need to add the script to this player, so just take your script and drag it onto the player here, so that the player has to play a script on him. Simply just going to clear my console here. Yes, okay. When he has the player script on him, we will need to add um, one more thing to him. We need to add a collision box, because we are going to test everything with collisions. So click on the player, click add component, find the uh, right box for example, and find box collider 2D because this is a 2D game. So we are going to click on the 2D and set the box collider to a trigger. We also need to add a rigid body 2D to the player so that we can actually create our collisions because um, we would need a rigid body to be able to call on trigger enter and on trigger exit. So write rigid. And then when you do that, there's two rigid bodies to pick from. And you have to select the rigid body 2D because right now we're working in a 2D game. So click rigid body 2D. If you play your game now, you'll see that the player will fall to the ground here. And we're not interested in that since this is a 2D game and we don't want it to jump. Then we can simply set the gravity scale here to zero and then play our game again. And you'll see that the player doesn't move at all. He just stands still right there. Okay, so that's one of the things we need to do. As I mentioned, we will have to add some other objects to the game later, uh, the bonfire and the heart. And these two objects will be um, colliding with the player. Um, to make it easier for you to test this by colliding, uh, by clicking on the keyboard to move around, um, we will have to add some functionality to the player script. Because if we don't do that, you will have to go to the scene view yourself and move the player around like this to make the scrolling combat text appear and maybe that's not very uh, nice to do so instead of doing that we will just add some very simple functionality to the player script here and the functionality we are going to use is simply just some movement um, movement uh, script here so we're going to make a public float called speed and this one is used to determine how fast the player will move Inside the object, we will have to look at the vertical and the horizontal axis. The vertical axis is used when we are moving left and right, uh, sorry, up and down, and the vertical axis is used to, okay, I'm messing around here. The horizontal axis is used to move the player left and right, of course, and the vertical axis is used to move the player up and down, of course, I mixed that up. So, we're going to make a float called vertical, spell and it's equal to input dot get axis vertical so this gets the vertical axis and the reason that we can use input dot get axis is because um, the axes are already in assigned in unity so if you had a joypad or like um, a joystick or something the vertical axis would also be going from up to down for example then we're going to create a new float called horizontal and get input that get axis horizontal there we go. 
So this is our, our horizontal axis and this is our vertical axis. So now we are reading the input uh, that we're getting through our, through our keyboard. We need to use that input to move the player. So we can say um, transform the translate new vector three and the X is the horizontal. You can write horizontal and the um, y is the vertical vertical and we don't need to do anything in C then we need to um, multiply this um, when we're moving him so we need to multiply by the speed multiplied by uh, time dot delta time and to make this more easy to read just put the speed and the time the delta time inside a parenthesis here. So here we are cal we are figuring out what direction we need to move in. And here we are multiplying by the speed to put that in as a factor for how fast we're going to move. And then we have the time the delta time to make the movement frame rate independent. So we always multiply by time the delta time inside update if we want something to be frame rate independent so that it doesn't run faster on a computer with 100 FPS compared to a computer with, um, for example, 60 FPS. Because update runs, yeah, runs per frame. So that was the player script. Let's see if we go back to our game, click on our player, and we'll check that his speed is higher. Let's set it to five. Then we can play our game and we should be able to move our player around as you can see here. So now we have the, um, yeah, what is it called? The ability to move the player so that we can collide with all the other objects. Okay, so we need some other things. If we look at this class diagram here, it might look a little confusing. You'll see that I have written down what we actually need. So we have our player and we can see that he has some health and he has a function called take damage, for example. Um, take damage is used to reduce the player's health and int health is the health that the player has, for example. Um, I'm simply going to create the scripts now and we'll look at the content later when we're going to create it. So basically the player can instantiate combat text by sending a request to the combat text manager. This means that when the player takes damage, uh, let's say an enemy shoots an arrow, the player gets hit, the player needs to reduce his health and when he's reducing his health he needs to ask the combat text manager to create some combat text on top of him so the player, so, so that the user of the game can see um, that the player lost some health. On that we have a script called combat text manager and it actually creates the combat text in our game world and it says the properties of the combat text and this means that it says the uh, combat text color, the, um, the font, the fade time, how fast should it fade out, how fast should it move, where in the game world do you need to instantiate it and so on. So this combat text manager basically makes sure that we can create the combat text exactly where we want it and how we want it. So you can see it takes a position, the text that should be written in it and the color and it also decides if this is a critical hit, for example. So this is one of the scripts. So let's go into Unity, right click, click create, C sharp script and call it combat text. Uh, no, combat text manager, of course, not combat text. If you did the same as me, just named it wrong, Combat Text Manager, then make sure to open up your script and rename it in here to Combat Text Manager as well. Because the, the script in here always needs to have the same name as it has out here, else it's not gonna work out. Okay, just gonna save this so I don't get any errors. So that's one thing we need. Then we also need to add the Combat Text script. And this script is attached to the text game object. So it's attached to the text that is floating it on top of the player when he takes damage or gets healed. It makes the text move by its update function. It makes the text fade out when it needs to fade out and it removes the text from the game world. So when we can't see the text anymore, there's no reason to keep it in the game. So we're just gonna remove it. And it also has some different, yeah, uh, code scenes and everything. But we'll look at that later when we are going to write the code. For now, Go into Unity and right click, click create, make it C-sharp script, and this time we can call it combat text. 
this. Then we have our combat text here. Um, we can actually create our combat text manager already. So go to your create function here. Uh, create function, yeah, the create button. Go to to the uh, create empty. There we go. So create an empty game object and rename it to uh, combat text manager. The easiest way to rename it is either like you can click here and then go up here and rename it or you can just select it and press F2 if you're on a PC. Uh, I, I'm not sure about the shortcuts on a Mac. So that is our combat text manager. I actually think that's what I would like to set up right now. Um, in the next tutorial I'll be jumping into my um, my other project where I have the animated sprite but you can simply just stay in this project here and follow along it, it's going to be the exact same thing the only difference is that I'm going to have the sprite animated so he moves when I uh, so he's animated when I move around and I'm going to have another background 